Dude, Sorry, dude, my bad, dude. What are you doing right now? This is how I stretch. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the second episode of the Creative People Podcast. And let me just reintroduce myself. My name is Omar. Here with us today. Your boy Eli. You got Paul. You got your boy Alex. And of course, our special guest for today is the one and only Juju. Hey. What's up, guys? What's going on? <laughs> welcome, welcome, What's going welcome. On? What's going on, guys? So, like we said before in the first episode. The Creative People Podcast was created so that we can just have different people come and showcase, tell us their story, talk to us about what God is doing in their life, everything that uh, consists of your past, your present, and what's yeah. going on in the future. So, Juju, first of all, we want to say thank you for being with Appreciate us today, guys. Man. Heck yeah, this is cool, dude. This yeah. is a great vibe going on here. This is so... I'm, I don't know. I've never seen anything like it, so I'm really excited. It's kind of cool. I oh, like man, we, we appreciate you being here with yeah, us. So before uh, anything, man, we, I think everybody here just uh, wants to kind of share a few words with you. I think it would be cool for everybody to just kind of see, like, what is okay. it that we're expecting from you on your end? Cool. What do we want to know about? I'm going to start off saying that, you know, we, I've already kind of personally got to gotten to know you a bit, but I, yeah. I want to know more about, like, who Juju was as a kid, you know, what's his oh, family about? What, what is it that led you to be Juju today? You know what I mean? Dude, Um, well, like, I come from a very uh, musical family, so everyone, like, traditionally knows me, like, hey, dude, you're the guy that plays keys, but, like, um, what's it called? But, yeah, um, come very, a very ministral musical family. Right. Spanning, like, four generations, like, before me, uh, Houston, Texas, born and raised. Um, sure. Other than that, I know, right, dude? Other than that, like, i just been here all my life, dude. Um, but, yeah, dude, uh, had a, my grandfather started a church in the Rio Grande Valley area, more like Carlington, Texas, right. around that area. My grandma, who's still alive today, running at 92, dude, so nice. it's pretty cool. Wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, started over there and then made his way to Houston, man, made that big jump. Back mm -hmm. in the 70s, when my dad was just, he was like around my age at the time. Wow. And from there, we established what is Bethel Christian Center. And then from there, that was kind of like my playground, so type of thing. But yeah, dude, we kind of have a really big family in general, big ministry family. Like my grandfather uh, um, had, was it, it was 12, 12 kids, so six six uh kids. yeah six wow. daughters and that's it six, yeah six kids so like six team. me six what kids uh yeah dude he had you know what i'm saying he had uh six daughters and uh six sons but spanned from two marriages his, free, uh, his uh, first wife actually passed away giving birth to aunt who unfortunately at the time wow. was back in the 60s passed away yeah. um but um so if anything everyone did everything so like the brothers were practically the band and the sisters you know they sang and so they had you know for uh no one knows this. well many do but when the ministry realms well like my grandfather had a like a tent revival and so mm -hmm. he would go all over the united states with my uncles and my you know my dad and stuff like that just sharing the gospel sharing the gospel oh, yeah dude Man, that's crazy that's yeah. like old school too cause yeah 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 you know, when i was growing up i was always here i would always hear about like these tent revivals and my mom yeah. would love going to them because it, it always like i feel like they really planned out to like just minister to people that don't go to church right yeah like, it's like what it's meant like totally tent. perfectly meant for like i remember i like show up to like um like just random like services you know and they said, like, oh, like, who are your parents? Like, oh, I know your, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know your dad. I knew who your grandpa was. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just, like, I don't know, randomly, this has actually happened before. I told them, like, who am I, you know, it's like, they, like, they didn't even, like, ask me who my dad was. They're like, oh, you're Abel's son. Mm -hmm. And I, like, and I was like, whoa, like, okay. You look exactly <laughs> like him. That's why I was like, okay. <laughs> you he, goes, and he goes, he goes, he goes, I'm about to give, can I give you a hug right now? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, if it wasn't for your grandfather, none of my family would be saved right now. Wow. You know, now, this saying? was before pre COVID. Yeah, this is pre COVID, dude. This is pre COVID. So <laughs> now it's all about social This is, this is about like, <laughs> I was like, I was, no, this is like, a few hey, years back, but he's like, man, if it wasn't for your grandpa who, you know what I'm saying, who pitched a tent, you know, in like in the middle of nowhere, Texas, you know, wow. none of my, you know, my parents wouldn't have been saved. None of my siblings would have been saved. And 
like our ministry would never start if it wasn't for your grandpa just to say like yes like let's Man. pinch a tent like in the middle of nowhere texas so i was like heck yeah crazy so wait let me ask you this what have you ever i mean i don't know if you got a chance to actually sp- uh, speak to your grandfather about it or maybe your your own parents talk to you about it but yeah what actually made what what gave him the idea to want to open up a church like did somebody tell him he had to be a pastor or like traditionally like dead? my grandfather wasn't like the story behind my grandfather he wasn't traditionally saved like he oh, wow. we have photos of him of like he's like wielding like a freaking 12 gauge shotgun with the bottle like a 40 <laughs> <laughs> you know that's his thing you know and saying like and he bien came Mexicano. from a big yeah like bien Mexicano, dude. Like, and he comes from a, he comes from a big family as well like he's like part like cherokee or i don't even know cherokee something indian like his mother was indian yeah father was mexican so like and then it wasn't until, like, he gave his life to the Lord, went to missionary school. Wow. And then, like, he ended up, what's it called, just kind of doing his own thing. And then after having a family, he just kind of got called ministry. Like, this is because, like, my grandpa was born in the 20s. And so he kind of went through, like, everything that's worse about each era. Like, yeah. cold, you know what I'm saying? Like, Great Depression, Cold War, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Just, World War II. All, World, diseases, all the diseases, dude. Oh, yeah. And he still oh, managed oh. to raise a family, dude. <laughs> It's crazy, dude. <laughs> Super crazy. My grandfather was a he was a trendsetter, dude, back in in those times, dude. So heck yeah, it yeah. was awesome, dude. So then, so your grandfather did he open up the church, which is Bethel Community Center, or did he open it up and just gave it to your father? So traditionally, he had a church in the valley, first ever church in Harlingen was called um, Tabernacle. Mm. So when he got called to Houston, I was in the seventies. Um, the church was. The original church, believe it or not, was actually like actually got burned down in 2007. So, oh, wow. yeah. Um, but that original church was actually it belonged to a Baptist group, and then like um, before the Baptist group, I didn't, I didn't even know this. Before the Baptist group, that actual building belonged to like United States Army. Like it was barracks for soldiers, oh, and they transitioned that into a church. Wow. And so like. But yeah, he started that in the 70s. And then after he, at the time, my dad was kind of too young to pastor. So he actually, I think he ended up giving it to like, to pastor to uh, one of my uncles or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then after some time, my dad ended up pastoring. That was like maybe the early 90s, earlier. Sorry. So how, how long has that church been open? Your church, your home church? Oh, and dude, in general, since the beginning, like it's, it's going to go on 40 years, something like that. Oh, wow. Close to 40 years. And your dad's yeah. been pastoring for about... Roughly about how many years? Twenty. It's gonna, it's, dude. Man, that's uh, so. It might have happened. In the, you kind of transitioned to the early '90s, so maybe '91, '92 around okay. that time. Yeah, I might be wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, um, so yeah, close to thirty years, close to 30 years dude. Yeah, nice. yeah, dude. Wow, so before you were born, right? Pretty much, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. My dad. It was just, it was just my mom and my dad, dude. Just kind of like taking care of everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Heck yeah, dude, they've been holding it down. So I'm sure you've been asked this plenty of times by like that, every single other, you know, Christian or person that gets to meet you and hears your story. Like, yeah. does that mean you're going to be the next pastor? Or, dude. Or is that uh, something dude. that you're yeah, like, you're like, man, I'm I ain't going to I was going to ask that. Yeah. Dude, honestly, it's, like. Because honestly, you do look like a pastor. Wow. Really? I, I just have that vibe. Go <laughs> no, on the plaid. It's no, the it's plan. the hair, bro. It's, it's the plaid. It's, it's the plaid. Hair, something told me it's the plaid. Truthfully, man, like. So here's the thing, like it, it just starts because uh, my my dad gave here gave my brother a name Salome, which is my my grandfather's name, because he knew the Lord told him I want you to give Salome to your firstborn because he's gonna have the anointing to preach. And wow. sure enough, my brother is co-pastoring now at the church, right. and the Lord told my dad I want you to give your name. Actually, my real name is Abdiel. That's my government name. I just go by Abel because it's like something they called my dad because mm-hmm. they couldn't pronounce his first name. So I was like, I mean, they called me. So his name's Abdiel as well. Yeah. And so they, the Lord told him, hey, I want you to give your second son, Abdiel, because he's going to have the gift of music in, in him. And so ever since, you know. Um, but, yeah, I get that question all the time. Like, will you pastor? I'm like, like my brother's already doing it. So it's kind of like it's kind of like when someone's I don't want to sound rude. It's like, Here's hey, my we, excuse pass. Like, you know, when someone says like, you know, when someone says like, <laughs> It's like, you know, when someone says, hey, take out the laundry, like, oh, my brother, he took out the laundry. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, I'm like, clean, you know, clean. I was like, you know, my brother's already pastoring. Like, he already gets to do that. Like, I'll do the other chore in the house of God. You know, I'll kind of do the music. So, but it's, I ain't going to lie to you. It's kind of like been a burden in my heart. Like, you know, I, like, I feel like when I hear other pastors and 
other stuff like it resonates with me like man like i thought the same thing you know what i'm saying like it'd be you know what i'm saying i know one day i'll have not that position but like that sort of influence to like to you know the lord to speak through me and stuff like that but i don't know about pastor that's kind of a toughy one dude like that's a tough one being a pastor is not easy today especially today it's a lot of responsibility bro it's a ton of responsibility yeah my dad tells me all the time, like, man, son, like, like, oh, he's like, I, you never knew what I went through, but I will never know what y'all guys go through at y'all's age. So a pastor yeah. today will never understand Ooh. what a pastor went through back in the eighties or nineties and a pastor in the eighties or nineties will not understand what happens as a pastor. Yeah. So it's just the matter of respect, but, um, but yeah, dude, it's, I get asked this all the time, dude, like <laughs> all the time, mainly cause I carry my dad's like first name, but heck yeah, right. dude. So. so, so you already said it. As of right now, you're, it's not in your mind as far as like, oh, I can't wait to become a pastor. It's more like, yeah, well, my brother already took the responsibility. Pretty much, dude. Like, the ambition is kind of just like, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's, it's, not my, it's not my ambition at all. So, my next question would be then, what led you to start doing music? Would you say, like, from the moment you were, like, born, your parents were already kind of, like, just putting that on you? Like, hey, oh, you know, definitely, we need some dude, musicians? Most, most, def- most definitely, dude. Like, like... My dad, like for my, my for my dad being a pastor, he's very like, like I wouldn't consider a pastor. You know what I'm saying? My dad was truly a dad. Like, and there's like a little side note, like for like pastors' kids out there, like I feel I, like every time somebody tells me like, man, we're opening up a new church, I always tell them like, man, the first thing I say is like, I'm not gonna pray for the pastors. I'm gonna pray for the kids first because, man, I know what it's like to be a pastor's kid. And yeah. sometimes like, dad will not be dad when he comes home. He'll still be pastor. And that's what I love about my dad. Shout out, dad. Um, what's it called? He was always <laughs> dad at home. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was always dad at home. You know what I'm saying? So by that, establishing that, we had a great musical foundation. Like, it, was, it wasn't it was just the same thing. We had, like, my dad showed me, like, who Alejandro Sanz was, mm. Casey and the Sunshine Band, the Commodores. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my first, um, like, my first CD he bought me was, uh, what's it called? It was, uh, it was Santana, dude, Santana, oh, wow. and so like we like we just jammed that all the time, dude. Mm. So, but yeah, like we just had a, I just had a great musical like Definitely. influence upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. And then from there, like piano wasn't my first instrument, dude. My first instrument in church was percussion. Like I played bongos, I played what? the congas, like the <laughs> timbales and stuff like that. Uh, not the weedle dude but I had I had like little ones to the side but dude like my 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 biggest inspirations were like Tito Puente Javier Solis you know Giovanni Hidalgo like all those guys like I wanted to be those guys dude it wasn't until like that's when piano came in like my mentor my spiritual mentor is named by Jesse another shout out what's it called he was like he approached me I was like 15 still playing this stuff dude and like he came up to me he was like gotta stop playing the bongos dude like <laughs> said, it's time to switch it up time dude. to switch it up and uh he showed me some stuff on keys and then like ever since then like i think like it was just one of those things that like god knew what he was doing in my life because like he first like he knew i needed rhythm hmm. you know what i'm saying he knew i needed some sort of background to like hey dude i need you on six eight i need you on three four i need you on four four he brought me in all of that and then when Jesse came into my, you know what I'm saying, at that age, he's like, he brought melody, he brought harmony, he brought, you know what I'm saying, he brought soul. And, dude, he was very gracious with me, dude, when he came to teaching me, dude, because I was like, at first it was tough, dude. <laughs> um, so, wait, so you started playing piano at the age of 15? Um, no, like, I was very hesitant, dude. He showed me some stuff. I didn't start playing piano until I was like 18. 18. So total, how wow, long have was, you been playing the yeah, piano so for? You're a late bloomer, bro. Dude, yeah. pretty much, I was really late in the game. Like all, like all of all my friends that I'd see that are 18 were like, you know, they're all superstars. Yeah, right? dude, I'm over <laughs> here like I know G, <laughs> I know G major. You know what I'm saying? I know pads. I know pads. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> and it, honestly, like I think what helped was like I I made that initiative because in a sense I knew that like he like at a young self like. I knew that he wanted to transition into pastoral ship and stuff like that. I was right. like, man, like I took the self initiative to say like, uh, yeah, dude, I'll pick up keys. You know what I'm saying? So, so he was a member of your church then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, so he's, he, yeah. It's almost like he was basically just creating a, a, a new disciple so to take his place. So yeah, exactly. He can move on to yeah, a, a exactly. Different position. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were yeah, literally yeah, yeah. just talking about that today, yeah. right, Polly? Uh, yeah. We're on the phone having a conversation about just 
how it's so important for people to do that, like real leaders. And I think I think a lot of leaders sometimes struggle with that, where they have the opportunity where they meet somebody who's interested in something, yeah. but they, they, they almost struggle with insecurities or they start yeah. feeling like, like man, this, this guy, kid, this guy's getting better than me. Or yeah, there's some like type that. of oh yeah, dude, yeah, dude. Yeah. But instead, like a real leader is more like, man, this kid's got an interest. Yeah. I I can have the opportunity to build this person up. Yeah. And not only that, now I can help this person learn something new, learn this yeah. skill, develop yeah. that. And while he's learning, I'm growing in another aspect of my life as well. So that's yeah, dude. like that's people, a great shout out for Jesse. Dude, they, people don't understand like the power of duplication. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? When you duplicate yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, you know what I'm saying? They take a piece of you and then whatever comes after them, you know what I'm saying? They're still carrying that and they're going to experience, this, you know what I'm saying? Those new situations or music influences, stuff like that. So um, the more the merrier. You have the opportunity to duplicate yourself, do it as much as you can. You know what I'm saying? Even when it's those, you know, that person that doesn't seem to like, it's not really, you know, it's really kind of coming through one year, not the other. Right. Dude, it took me three years to kind of say like, all right, I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you just plant that seed of duplication and say like, man, I, cause I believe in you. I see something in you. Right. I'm going to take a chance on you. You know what I'm saying? I take yeah. a chance on everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to invest, you know, I'll put my, you know what I'm saying? My, like my, all my knowledge as much as I can, you know what I'm saying? Because making dude, deposits here and there, because you just, dude, you never know. You never know. Like who am I to hold all these earthly things? And it's just like, man, I'm like, I'm just becoming this type of mega mind. And like, for what, you know what I'm saying? When I perish, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like what, like not necessarily my physical body, but like my music, say like my musical, you know what I'm right. saying? Like career or something or like my musical life. It's like, okay, what do you have to show for it? Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Je- yeah. My, he's actually my older cousin, oh, but okay, I just cool. had that sense of respect for him. Like, cause if I had like, man, you're my cousin, man, whatever. No, I, I actually, like authority as figure. authority, authority figure to say like, Hey dude, yeah. whatever you say, I'm gonna listen to it because I know you went through it before I did. So I don't have to go through it. You know what right. I'm saying? So I had yeah. a friend who once told me that because uh, I, I was expressing to my friend like, man, honestly, I feel like I, I'm so like backtracked, like I need to catch up yeah. because, you know, compared to most of the musicians that I know, they've been playing since they were kids or yeah. in some one way or another, maybe not necessarily the same instrument, but they've been involved in that background. And so what he told me was like, nah, man, now that you've met me, it's like you're on my shoulders and yeah, I'm yeah. actually lifting you up. Yeah. So I'm trying to get you there faster. Bro, you know what's so funny now that you say that shoulders? Yeah. My birthday's December 5th and his is December 6th. What the- so I have this picture of him when I was maybe about two or three years old. And he has me. You know, I don't know if y'all remember Astroworld that used to park on the other side of what? 610. Of course we remember Astroworld. <laughs> but like, you know that. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all used to park we on the other side. Than you. Yeah, we were Astroworld. <laughs> My bad, my bad. I don't know. I it's skipped school like, to be at Astro. I, I, right? I used to skip school to be at Astro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My aunt would do that for us. Do love my aunt? His mom. What the- She'll take us out of school to go to Astro. She'll take 45. us out of school like around 8:30. Like oh. <laughs> school starts at 7:45. <laughs> you know, so. Um, dude, yeah, I know, right? So I don't know if you remember. You used to walk. From the other side of 610. From the parking lot, you had to cross the... To go the, to the park. It's like a little trail with the bridge yeah, yeah. up there. Yeah. So there's a picture of me and him on that bridge. And he has me on his shoulders. I'm going to sleep on his shoulders. Wow. And so I use that every every time it's like it's my birthday and the next day. I always post that picture because like he always like had me like right there. Yeah. So it was cool. Dang. So it was just a good memento. Like just for a split second, like how much that really like manifested like yeah. years later. So Absolutely. Cool. So... Age yeah. of 15, you're learning to play piano. Yeah. What's next? Eventually, did, did they start saying, hey, it's time for you to just do it on your own and start leading at church playing the piano? What was Yeah, that like? so he ended up, my cousin Jesse or my mentor, he ended up getting a position, which is Elevate People here in Houston downtown. Mm-hmm. And so, if anything, like by that time when he really transitioned out, like I was kind of really ready developed on some stuff. And so, I, me and my brother kind of took like took that head on, co-headed like picking songs and you know what i'm saying right and like getting rehearsals together and for us because he did everything mm. and he told us what to do and then we kind of just took that hit on and, we, and i did that like you know so me and him did that together for maybe about maybe like three four years you know yeah. what i'm saying and so it was kind of one of those things like during that time it was a really big surprise for us like oh man i didn't know you ever you know ever kind of transition out 
And then some, in some sense, you like, not to like bash anybody, but like, you already know how majority Hispanics can be like, man, how dare you? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you do this? And I always tell people like, don't you realize like that is the greatest thing that could have happened to me and my brother. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because eventually he knew, he knew he was self-aware that in a way he was being a cap. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For me and my brother, I would have never taken that step to say like, you know what? I can do this. Right. I can do this. We can do this. And then eventually my brother would on also to go on to start pastoring, co-pastoring our church. Right. So, and I always make people realize that like, if anything, that if anybody out of everybody who was close to him would be me and my brother, we were practically his flock. You know what I'm saying? Right. His, you know, so that was probably the greatest thing that like the, the turning point, you know what I'm saying? The direction of where I am now, you know, the place I am now is that moment right there when he said like, hey, I think it's time best that, you know what I'm saying? I transition out. I think it's the best thing that could have happened. You know, I have a, a friend who's a pastor. Uh, his name is Pastor Casas, and he would always tell me that as a pastor, he never holds on to his members too tightly because he believes that some are meant to arrive and for them to just start blossoming exactly. within yeah. his church. Yeah. And some of them arrive, and it's almost like it's only momentarily for them to get prepared, to get molded, oh, for yeah, them dude. to just learn and just absorb everything they can from that church yeah, so dude. that when God leads them to leave, whether it's to another church or to yeah. maybe plant their own thing or yeah. start like, you know, doing missionary work or anything like yeah. that, like God has literally prepared that moment for the right moment. And so, man, yeah. I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree with that because who yeah. are we to hold somebody back? And yeah. we don't know what can come out of that, right? So like, sure, it may have seemed like, man, we're losing one of the best musicians, our mentor, we're losing yeah. a great leader here at the church. Yeah. But, and that's what but I exactly also, thought initially, like, man, absolutely. how could he ever do this to us? And then it wasn't through time that I saw and realized why he did it. The doors yeah. opened and now yeah. you had the opportunity to develop yourself. You had to, your brother had the opportunity to start working as a, in under a, a pastoral ship. Right. Yeah. So. so man, that's, that's awesome. But my, I guess, I guess, how did you take that? Like, did you feel like you were able to take it on or oh, immediately man, like, you're like, man, this is, this is going to just go down the hill. Traditionally. Like I really thought it was going to go downhill because like, I, like all I knew was how to play keys and it's like, man. And like, I, there's a difference between like learning, like how to play a song, but learning how to lead worship. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Everyone probably knows that, but like, I was kind of just like, man is like, is the same effect, you know, is that same, not, not at that time I was like is that same anointing is that same you know empowerment really gonna flow through and at first it was like in the physical realm you know it was like very tough because our the traditional reaction were like oh you know people you know lifting their hands you know what I'm saying and of course more engaged and like man the church like struggled with me man <laughs> it was yeah. just because it was just me my well us not me but us it was just me my sister and my brother and so we actually like, you know, led worship. But um, did, it was just y'all three, a three, a three piece. Yeah, it was my brother on drums. Really? At the time, yeah, the me on keys and my sister sang, dude. So, um, so but yeah, dude, like just kind of playing the same four songs, and you know right. what I'm saying, and uh, see where ABC, we get from there. C B A. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just switching it up. You know, Gloria. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but um, over time, it's like, man, like. Um, always, uh, always thought this, like, you know, the Bible, you know, like, of course, like, I feel like Goliath was meant for David to conquer. And mm -hmm. I feel like everybody's there. Everybody has a Goliath in their life, meaning God has des designated a battle mm -hmm. just for you, specifically for you. Right. And like that battle was probably a good, <laughs> that giant was a good maybe two to three years before we got, you know what I'm saying? Started, you know, developing, developing ourselves, you know? Right. And so, but other than that, man, is it's one of those things that, you know, I can stand tall and say like, man, I cut the head off of that giant and I raised it up and I said, man, nice. you know, when fire, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's fire, right? That's you know I could say like, man, like, you know what I'm saying? This battle, you know what I'm saying? Belongs to the Lord, but he gave us the victory. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, Heck yeah, man. Uh, if you're in, like, and I always tell people this, if you're enduring times like this, man, like, look around you, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Not to, uh, maybe, maybe this is something, I, like, I don't know, maybe backwards, but enjoy the pain. Because when I went through that, like, I, I, I wish I can go back in time and say things differently or yeah. do things differently or decide things differently. Right. Rather than, you know what I'm saying, what I did. 
But if anything, God knows, you know what I'm saying, like the decisions we make and how we feel. He knows our hearts and stuff like that. But he's he's preparing something for us that's, you know, greater, you know. But um, right. And speaking of preparing things for something greater, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know Juju personally or may not follow him on his uh, Instagram or Facebook, his Twitter, his Twitch, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever Just social media up. pages he Just has. signed up. <laughs> Um, you know, actually, Abel uh, has now the opportunity. He's been playing for Marcos Witt for how, how long have you been playing for Marcos now? Uh, so we started last year, last year of right. October. No, last, last yeah, last year of October 2019. So, so talk to us a little bit about that. How, how did that opportunity even come up? Man, I, like this story is so weird. So um, <laughs> this like I've been knowing Marcos. I met him in 2017. He came to our church and uh, spoke and, and played. Right. And uh, we were the opening band. And me being like very self-conscious, like, man, the band's got to be tight. It's got to be, you know what I'm saying? We got to be on point. And I really missed the mark, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I wrote a lot of hits and breaks. Me being me, anybody who knows me, I love hits and breaks, you know. Yeah. But like, um, it was just a very, like, I was just very stressed. Like, man, dude, this is like, this This is the dude who ba- practically set the path for most of us as like Hispanic and Latino worship, you He's know. definitely a legend. And, dude, he was, like, sitting right there in the front row. You know what I'm saying? And the band did great. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, who was that night? It was Joey uh, Rodriguez, David Maldonado, Victor Alvarenga, uh, Christian Baeza, uh, my friend Frank Perez, who unfortunately passed away due to COVID, but rest in peace. Um, but it was that band, dude. And uh, I ended up playing, and he ended up asking who was directing that band. And it's, my dad said, oh, my son did. He was like, hey, let me uh, bring the band in after service. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk to your son. And so he got the band, introduced himself to everybody. And we're like, man, you don't need an introduction. We already know. He was like, hey, guys, I'm Marcus. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? And um, we're all super excited, dude. And he's like, he came directly towards me and said, hey, man, um, give me your phone number. We're in exchange contact information, dude. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I just, let's just, you know, just switch information, dude. You're, you're really special, dude. So ever since that time, it was 2017, um, what's it called? We just always stayed in contact, like, hey, man, how's the family and stuff? And it's like, oh, it's good. And it wasn't until maybe August 2019, last year. Um, I don't know the specifics, but I know there was a transition between personnel and the band, so Marcus was looking for new musicians. Right. And so I remember that day, like, so during 2019, like, Financially, it was a really rough year for me. I yeah. didn't, you know, what I'm saying musically, I wasn't really, you know, having any clients, no, no really songwriting sessions, and so I was like, man, dang it! So I ended up taking taking on a plumbing job in Baytown, hmm. Texas. Um, shout out to my friend Michael Provajic, hooked it up, <laughs> bro, came in clutch. Sure. And so, man, that was like that job. This it all leads to this. That job was a true test of character for me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> true test because i know i can do the work physically right. but man like some of the things i was doing like not like fulfilling not fulfilling at all dude like i'd really have crappy days literally <laughs> just and um so i remember there's this one particular day my boss calls me he's like hey we don't have any helpers today i need you to go with one um what's it called the plumber I need you to go under this old house one of their toilet pipes busted i need you to crawl under the house because you're one of the smallest guys who can fit under there i'm like are you serious so there goes me in a big old jumpsuit <laughs> crawling under a house dude yeah. trying to fi- help him fix this pipe bringing in tools bringing in, you know i'm saying stuff and i remember like it was just a really horrible day and like i remember got out of the house we finished the job and i was like man like i told god like seriously like this is what you want me to do like the countless times i could have died like i don't know if y'all know this i could have died like three or four times wow. straight you know what i'm saying and i said like dude you had many people tell me like man you're gonna do something special you're gonna do amazing things I'm like, like, I mean, no disrespect to plumbing or anything like, cause those, you know, that type of workforce, dude, I, I applaud it. Absolutely. Hard but, working. But it just wasn't my calling. I'm like, I told God, like, really dude, like seriously, I was just having a rough day. And I told, I told God that day, if nothing happens by the end of two, 2019, that makes me like, at least want to stay within music ministry, then I'll keep going. Wow. I'll keep going. And I was like, I'm giving it till the end of the year. That was that was August, and as I'm giving it to the end of the year, if nothing happens, I'm quit. I'm selling everything, my speakers, my interfaces, 
everything pianos if, if i have to give it away for free because i have nothing wanting to do with this because nothing is working out like the way i see my other friends doing like what the right. heck man so just real crappy day you know once i i drove to my lunch break crying because like it was like man dude this life is hitting hard right now dude yeah. and so i remember i get a call from mike zuniga yeah. bassist a uh, phenomenal bassist he's like hey dude so opportunity came up do you think we can meet for coffee after what's the time what time is good for you? I was like, at five o'clock, perfect. So I show up at the Starbucks in my plumbing uniform, dude, still with mud, <laughs> maybe even poop. You know what I'm saying? All sure my boots mud. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just sweaty, you know what I'm saying? You know, just horrible looking into a Starbucks who everyone's like they're just all hipster, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like everyone smells like, smells like the aroma of coffee, and there comes me with poop on my jeans, you know what I'm saying? You know? And you know what I'm saying? It was a real tough day. And you probably needed I, – I figured Mike, because we're really – like our ministries are really close right. with his dad and my dad. I figured he needed me for like a camp retreat or special service. And I said, what's up, man? So we're there, and he goes like, hey, man, so there's been some changes, and Marcos is looking for a new team. Would you be down to play? And – and I was like, you know what? Let me think about it. You know, <laughs> you know let me think about it. Plumbing, Am I? <laughs> poop, Marcos Wade. You know, let me check you know. my plumbing guy. I'll be right back. <laughs> you, don't have the weekend. you know what I'm saying? Hey, Michael, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, man, that day, the day I decided to say, you know what, God, if this is what you want me to do, then so be it. Right. You know what I'm saying? If not, you know what I'm saying? Show me something. Right. And I, and I drove home. Just in complete tears, dude. Absolutely. And like, it was so ironic because that, you know, Marvin Sapp song is like, never would have made it. You know what I'm saying? Like, came on, dude, just by chance, dude. And I was just driving home in tears. Yeah. And then I remember that day, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, don't you ever test me ever again. What? Uh, <laughs> don't nice. you ever test me ever again. Yeah, man. And ever since then, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always tell people this. If you're thinking about quitting, don't. You know what I'm saying? There are always ways to be around it because your gift matters to you. Trust me, your art, you know, your creativity matters. Absolutely. It might not matter to a million people, but it might matter to one person. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's all we all want to do. Just like, you know, just you know, at least get one person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just get one right. person. Just get one person. Keep you going. Right. And dude, like, and ever since then, like my life has like never been the same. You know what I'm saying? Awesome, man. And so it's been great. That plumbing job, I told him, like, I didn't know how to tell him, like, hey, so there's this one artist, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He's kind of a really big deal, you know what I'm saying? And I know I got to go swap out this toilet, but, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but I think that I think this might have to be my last day here because, you know, we start rehearsals next week and stuff. And, yeah. you know, like, man, I'm really excited. And my boss at the time, he was really understanding. He went to church, too. He's a godly man. Oh, OK, great. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he completely understood. And he goes, man. Give me his like, autograph. Uh, no. Dude, exactly. That's what he did. That's what he did. Yes, I'm not a lie. He, get, he, got, he grabbed a Sharpie out of, his, out of his pocket and he goes, I want you to sign my wall. Oh, nice. Like, out of all the guys that came through here, dude, you're different. You're different. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Some guys here looking, you know, come here looking, you know, like for a job. But, like, when you came in here, like, I knew you were destined for something different. You know, the way mm. the look in your eyes, you just had something yeah. different. So I want you to sign my wall, dude. So nice. And my jacked up, it was just literally, like, scribble like <laughs> and then a line through it you know to make it look in a dot to make it look official and so yeah dude ever since then i got me some few hours in plumbing dude so yeah. uh, i know a little bit not yeah. a lot so, so i know who to call if something happens here you know uh not not me, <laughs> <laughs> not me. He's like, I was, I was you call the apprentice yeah, I was like, yeah dude you can call the company i can like you call me and i can put you on a three-way call oh, a, to get in so touch you're, with you're them just the gopher go for this go for that <laughs> pretty, pretty much dude yeah pretty much pretty much yeah. so you played for marcos with for about how many months because i know right now everything's been kind of canceled due to covid and all right man that was uh started in like september we went all the way to november and then we had something come up in, um, I believe, April. But due to COVID, it was supposed to be in Costa Rica with, like, Tres El Cielo. And I think Marcos Vidal and stuff. Nice. And I was so excited. Yeah. 
but you know, COVID nineteen really kind of took everyone for a ride. Man, anxiety. I think it took everybody for a ride. So, but but with that being said, I, you also got picked up by another another artist, right? That just yeah. recently picked you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Miel San Marcos, dude. Right. Heck yeah. How long have you been playing for Miel San Marcos now? As of now, it was literally like a year from what you know from Marcos Witt. So it was like October. Oh October. wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like it's like Marcos uh, had stopped and you were just waiting for it. Yeah, man, and I think up? yeah, and I'm pretty much like that can kind of goes for every everybody in terms of yeah. music, the live music industry. Like everyone's just kind of, you know, hungry for something, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And so, um, yeah, that day was very, um, very crazy day because uh, my brother was actually saving up for a Corvette, like this like nice 1980s Corvette. I remember we woke up like really early to go get it. And he ended up buying it, and um, I remember that day. So we were sitting at Taqueria. Well, yeah, and then um, we're sitting at Taqueria, and I met Chris Rocha maybe about a month or two before that at a music mm-hmm. video shoot. Chris Rocha is their lead guitarist. Yeah. And he's like, hey, bro, what you up to? I'm like, oh, just you're my favorite Taqueria, dude. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, hey, bro, so, uh, you know, uh, Miel needs a keyboardist for this day in Indiana. Like, would you be down? And I was like, let me think about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let me think everything. about it. You know? There you go, testing God again. <laughs> testing God again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, dude. I'm scared to ask you about what you want to eat. And be like, let me think about it. Let yeah. me think about it. <laughs> He's like, let me think about it. Yeah, I'll take forever, dude. Um, but then then again, dude, like this is October. You know, nothing's really happening. But they're, you know, they, hey, dude, God's been really good. And we went to Indianapolis, Indiana. And it was, ever since then, it's, what it, it's, uh, it, what it's been about two or three months now so yeah heck yeah it's been awesome dude. so why don't you talk to us a little bit just uh very briefly just a little bit about what that those experiences have done for you as far as like singing i mean playing for marcos with and also having the opportunity to now be playing with mesa marcos just you know give us something about um what that experience has been like for your life like you just don't know like the impact of like how much music can change people's lives dude like when you see people that come to the concerts and they're just so like they embrace these people as if like you know what i'm saying they're they're you know what i'm saying they haven't seen them in like years you know like you know that one person you haven't seen in years like is because like that one that one song you know what i'm saying that you know change that person's family forever right you know what i'm saying they're always so excited of course there may be like a celebrity effect too but in terms of like a spiritual aspect it's like man dude your song is like man dude like I was, my marriage is really kind of battling or like you know, I, w- I couldn't find a job, but, you know, every time I hear these songs, I, I gave myself inspiration, you know, like to kind of keep moving forward. But I think more than anything, just the amount of like humility these people have. And like, Absolutely. I always tell people this, like, I'm, you know, we've, of course, we've met people through, you know, like the Christian music industry who right. think like people owe them something. Right. People owe them, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but honestly, out of, everyone that i met who we consider the best like that's because i've come across like people like ingrid rosario daniel calvetti of course you know san marcos marcos wit like these are i consider the best of the best in our industry right now right the humility on these people like it's so crazy like they will serve you you know what i'm saying to make sure that you're good like it's the small things like hey do you need a chair like hey how are you doing have you eaten today you know what i'm saying like it's the small things like you figured you have to like approach them with like oh thank you you know what i'm saying like oh what are you doing like no like how's your family how's your parents you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying and i assure this to everyone like the best of the best are the most humbling of people i've ever met in my life so like just simple people people think they arrive in limousines you know what i'm saying and they must the mic must be ready when you know what i'm saying like no right. dude diva status no 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 like not at all dude these people are like like the most humbling of people i've ever met because if anything they they know how to relate to people they know right. where it's like you know they know what it's like to be at the bottom you know to interest and look at the top and say like man that's where i want to be and they know what it's like to be at the top and say i know where you're at right now and it's not the end you know what i'm saying but i sure i tell this all people this all the time cut the attitude cut the diva dude because look these you know like ain't not to sound mean but like truthfully like what have you done to say, <laughs> right. you know, and it's said, and then they're one of them. Um, I think who was, who was it that told me? Um, either it was, I think it was, man, who was it? 
I totally forgot, but they said, until every soul is saved, there's more work to do. Hmm. There's more work to do. So, cut, you know, cut the, cut the, you know, say yeah. cut the type, dude. Like, yeah. dude, there's no room for that at all, dude. So, at all. like, until your neighbor is saved, until, you know what I'm saying, until your, you know, your friend is saved, dude, there's a lot more work to do. So, absolutely. Cut it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, man, I, I just, uh, I think on our end, we're just really grateful to have you here today. We really appreciate you coming out and just yeah, course, sharing dude. your story, man, because, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are really interested in, 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 you know, seeking whatever personal goal there is for them, right? Like, you know, I think everybody has a dream. And so, the, yeah. you know, you have musicians, you have videographers, you yeah. have all kinds of creative people that sometimes feel like, man, like, when is it going to be my turn or when... Yeah. When, when when is that opportunity gonna you know yeah, yeah, yeah. come my way and stuff like that yeah. but you know i think your story today really just reminded us on waiting on god and allowing oh, god to just oh yeah dude t- you know let trusting god take timing. control exactly oh, dude. trusting god's yeah, timing all god's and, timing dude and that's so yeah. important for us to remember you know and and even then like in the meanwhile i've heard preachers say it i've heard uh a lot of famous people share a quote that says um Op, uh, success is when opportunity and preparation meet. Oh yeah, you know. Dude. And so, in the meantime, those of you who are watching this show um, and listening to to Juju's story today, like it's 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 you may feel like, man, when is it my turn? I would say right now you're in a season of practice. Yeah, and I think like the best quote I've ever heard was like, "Work while you wait, mm-hmm. and wait while you work." Nice. Meaning, you know, work while you wait. Meaning, you know, what I'm saying during that time, and you know, what I'm saying when it's hard you know it might be like man nothing's happening just continue work develop yourself right because you're preparing for yourself for the opportunity to say man like i'm ready i'm here you know what i'm saying and and to wait while you work to be very patient dude right because you know what i'm saying your time is like you know what i'm saying your time to shine quote unquote is gonna be you know what i'm saying it's it's place in god's hands to say like man this is your moment to shine be confident run with authority because, dude, I'm preparing something. I'm, you know, I'm kind of working something new in the shadows to kind of, you know what I'm saying, to put you in the light, you know what I'm saying, and to say, like, boom, here it is. And, and it's biblical, too, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? You know, the humble will be exalted and the exalted will be humbled, you know right. what I'm saying? And, dude, just humble yourself and say, like, you know what? I got more work to do on myself, on my character, maybe on musical skills, you know what I'm saying? You know. In every area of our lives. Yeah, you know what I'm so saying? Like, maybe, oh, yeah, always improve and Absolutely. say, like, man, Preach like. Pastor. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, Dude, Lord. Like, even though when you don't feel like you're ready, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, oh, that's how I always feel. I don't, I'm, I never, like, I always feel that I'm never ready. Right. And like, man, what a, you know, I'm, be the solution person and say like, man, what I need to work on today. So, you know, maybe like a few, you know, maybe a few years from now, like, man, I'm glad I worked on that three years ago. Right. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, Juju, we just want to say thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate you joining us here at the course, Creative dude. People Podcast. Appreciate it. Why don't you just share with everybody your Instagram, your Facebook, where can they find you? So, uh, my name, uh, I'm only on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. I do have a Twitter, but I mean, if you want to find me, it's not very active at all. <laughs> um, the last thing I put was I posted a video when I was at the Ramon Ayala concert when he came to the road. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's a great musical icon. So I figured like, hey, you know, let's go. Um, but Facebook, it's uh, Abel Juju Villarreal Jr. And then if it's on Instagram, it's under my kind of my stage name. It's Canavia. That's C-A-N-A underscore V-I-L-L. Find me. You'll be able to see all my content and, you know, SoundCloud all that stuff and so it's good man thank you very much man god bless you thank you for your time i appreciate it we'll see you guys on the next episode